Hey guys, uh, welcome and special welcome to my uh, subscribers who are also my uh, students on Skype. How are you doing guys? Today we're going to talk about, still in the blues category, the elusive and confounding blue note. What is this thing? But before we get to this, I want to tell you a little story uh, about my YouTube life. Uh, it's just a fun thing, and I, I, I have this video up, I'll tell you about it, that I, I'd like to try and make go viral, and I'll tell you why. All right, anyway, so what happened was one day I was walking along uh, Venice Beach Boardwalk, and a lot of the local businesses just to jolly things up like to uh, pump music out onto the boardwalk, and um, uh, one day I hear uh, this hip-hop tune. Now, bear in mind, I'm pretty stodgy about hip-hop. I didn't like it when the form first uh, arrived, and I especially pretty much hate it now. Um, but the interesting thing is, after all these years have passed, when I listen to the early hip-hop, I go, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, contemporary hip-hop just doesn't really cut it for me. There's just not, not – well, the way I describe it is there are three uh, – dimensions of music. There's uh, rhythm, uh, melody, and harmony. Um, you can break down all music into that. However, there is one uh, subtle element that people don't talk about, and that's texture. And texture is simply how the sound, like the quality of the sound that's being made, the actual color of the sound, if you want to put it that way. Um, for example, if I played a melody on a flute or a piano or on a saxophone, it's the same melody, but all three have different colors, okay? Now, when you get into the digital world, of course, now you can do colors of instruments that don't exist. They're virtual instruments that never really existed. Uh, now, my problem with a lot of EDM and um, hip hop uh, these days is that there's so much less development of harmony, melody, and rhythm like interesting rhythm that truly makes you want to dance um, when it's a constant, perfectly quantized uh, beat. It, there's something very artificial about that. In fact, you know, when you go to the source of uh, African American music, you go to Africa. Uh, the the tempos when they when they do these uh, drum orchestras, the tempos sway, and sometimes they'll deliberately suddenly speed up or slow down um, a tempo. In any case, my problem is basically that because computer technology is so enticing, people are going for, wow, this color, this color is so cool, this texture I'm getting, this sound I could make, whatever it is, uh, which is all well and good. I mean, you could cite Ravel's Bolero, or, um, and that's a masterpiece of colorizing an orchestra. However, it's sitting atop a greatly written melody and a very interesting rhythm, the bolero rhythm, uh, and the chord changes are, are also very interesting. So uh, point being, you cannot polish a turd by painting it. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work. So when you have a piece of music that sucks and you produce the hell out of it, it's still gonna suck. One of my bottom lines is this, if you can pick up an acoustic guitar and play that song on an acoustic guitar, and it still really holds up well and even has an effect on people, then you got some. Then you have something that's worthy of production. Uh, the Beatles again were masters of this. Um, you can take any highly produced Beatles song and break it down to just a piano and acoustic guitar, and it sits really well. And uh, that art, I mean, that held true throughout the '70s and even some music of the '80s uh, and some of the '90s too. Mostly the female artists in the '90s were doing more sophisticated work. Uh, and those songs really held up as truly well-written songs. What we have now are, are kind of like pastiches. You know, it's like what Photoshop is to visuals, Pro Tools is to sound. Um, you can do amazing things. And, and I've heard really wild textural stuff that I actually did like and didn't have a judgment about. But point being, anyway, I'm, I'm really prattling on here. So I hear this song. I'm walking by the boardwalk. I hear the song being pumped out. And... Uh, I could swear they're singing, fuck it like a puppet, over and over again, fuck it like a puppet, fuck it like, and I'm like, wow, that's just, that's just vulgar. Um, this is like the lowest of the low, uh, you know, in terms of, all right, call me stodgy, but really, I, I mean, seriously, how low are we going to go? 
Um, so in any case, I got pissed off by it. And I, I went home and I typed into YouTube. Literally, I typed in, fuck it like a puppet. And uh, what I got was, uh, was uh, the uh, hip hop group Migos. And uh, the song is Walk It Like I Talk It. All right. I'm sure there must be some subliminals in there because I heard fuck it like a puppet. You know, I really heard fuck it. Um, in any case, I wound up posting this on Facebook as a, a way of saying, look, you know, uh, here's a great example of why contemporary music just sucks. And uh, so I had, you know, a few people get on the thread and some were on my side and some, of course, people love to argue. Uh, so some people argued against, some people argued for. And then a buddy of mine, uh, hang on a second, the cops are looking for somebody in their helicopters. Okay, so anyway, a buddy of mine posted um, the same tune, but without the rap on it. And he said, you know, what you should do to get hits on your YouTube channel is lay a guitar over the audio track, some sort of ripping guitar, and, uh, you know, call it a cover in parentheses, and you'll get away with it and post it on your YouTube, and you'll get a gazillion hits. So I did just that. I haven't gotten a gazillion hits, but I'm hoping that this uh, little piece of music goes viral because what the transformation of the song is is kind of amazing. It, it turns into this beautiful, um, and I'm not pinning badges on myself. It just happened to be a nice chord progression, and I kind of sculpted into something that was really like a haunting piece of music, I feel, anyway. And... Uh, uh, when you compare it to the original track, it's really kind of funny. I have no idea what uh, Migos would say about this, and I hope they don't get pissed off. In any case, um, I, uh, <laughs> all right, any case, what I'd like you to do, if you could, is click on that song once in a while on my YouTube channel so the algorithms pick it up, pick up that people are watching it. I could get it bumped up in the, uh, in the search parameters that way. And tell your friends, all right? I don't usually do this. I'm not really into this whole, oh, I'm going to make a viral video, but I love this concept. It's kind of like the Beatles Yellow Submarine fighting the blue meanies with music. Um, I find a lot of contemporary hip hop to be aesthetically discordant, and it, it really makes my skin crawl to hear it. And what how I, how I dealt with that was making something beautiful out of something that I think initially was not so beautiful. So anyway, let's talk about the blue note now. First of all, we have to talk about chord environments again. We spoke about this in uh, major minor key system of Greek modes, I forget what. Uh, there are three types of chord, as you know, major, minor, and dominant seven, right? Uh, and you also have chord environments, and that's simply when your root chord is one of those three, okay? Now, of course, these chords can be extended, meaning drop more thirds on top of the chord. So you could have a C major, a C major seven, a C major nine, a C major six, nine, yada, yada. Okay, C major 13, all this stuff. With the minor chord, you could have C minor nine, C minor 11, C minor 13. Um, with the dominant seven chord, you could have, remember, there's no minor or major in between the letter and the number. So that would be uh, C7, C9, C11, C13, okay? Now the question here, all right, before I go into a question, so one of those three will be a root chord, either major, minor, or seventh. But the question is, since a major chord and a seventh chord are essentially the same thing, except the major, uh, in the seventh chord, the major chord has an added extension to it, how do you know if that major chord is expressing major seven or dominant seven? Do you get what I'm saying? Here's the major seven sound. Here's C major seven. All right, nice soft fluffy sound. For some reason, uh, my amp isn't picking this up for some reason. I just had it, and of course now it's not working. All right, never mind. You'll have to just, I guess, deal with this. Why is this not working? Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is the major seven sound. 
this is the dominant, what we call the seventh chord sound. Okay, big, huge difference. This is really, I'm just chill and floating on a cloud. And this is, I got a little spice in my uh, dessert. Okay. Now, so when you see a major chord, how do you know whether it's suggesting major seven or dominant seven? All right. That's the big question. So when you analyze the three chord types, build each chord up to four notes. This way you could match the amount of notes in a seventh chord. Seventh chord has four notes where uh, major minor triads have three. So this is the way you do the analysis then. This here, we're getting a lot of glare. Okay, this here up top is C, E, G, B. That's C major seven. In the middle, we have C, E flat, G, B flat. That's C minor seven. And at the bottom, we have C, E, G, B flat, C dominant seven. Okay. Unfortunately, there's glare, so I'm trying to get it so you can see all three. Okay, there we go. All right. So if you notice, the uh, dominant seventh chord has something in common with both the major and the minor chords. The dominant seven has the flatted seven of a minor chord, but it has the major third of a major chord. Okay. So... How you could test if you have a triad, okay, and you want to test to see if it's a bluesy thing with a flat seven or just a, a kind of more ballady thing with a major seven, extend the chord up to the seven and try both and see if they work, okay? So if I have something like, right, if I go, uh, uh, let's see what way to do this. Even though it's kind of soft for that kind of vibe, it's still, it seems to work. So in that case, you could say it's a major environment, okay? Whereas if you have something like this, uh, let's see. Well, especially if you hear a minor scale against that, you're going to know it's bluesy and therefore bluesy dominant seventh, okay? So... I'm going to lay down the major chords. Now, if I play the minor pentatonic against that, then we can instantly kind of say, okay, these must be dominant sevenths, so let's hear it with dominant sevenths. Now, that's not to say that G to C couldn't be a major seventh environment. It could. So if you use the minor G minor, I'm doing C major seventh, C major pentatonic, C major seventh. If I use the minor pentatonic against this, it's going to hit you over the head. That's a little too. Uh, that's a little too intense for that situation. It would be considered bad taste uh, to use to make that choice of scale. So when I'm in that situation, I don't do G minor pentatonic. I do G major pentatonic. Um, so I hope this is clearing some things up. Now, we're talking about harmonic environments. So how do you determine? Um, well, you know that the, the, uh, we have the three chord types. Uh, the harmonic environment is dictated by the root chord of the progression. So in the progression I just did, you can easily hear that the ending chord, and that's the key chord to, to determine uh, the environment you're in, you can very easily hear that G major seven wants to relax. Right? You don't want to stay on the C. It wants to go back home. 
All right, so uh, you can kind of fuss with the major, if it's a major chord at least, fuss with when the end of the song comes, if it's just plain old major triad, try sticking a flat seven on it and see if that sounds obtuse, then try sticking a major seven on it, see if that sounds a little better. Neither will sound 100% appropriate for a triad-based situation, but if you extend your imagination, you could hear whether it's uh, dominant or uh, major seven, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, to look at the blue note, uh, it gets a little complex here, so let me see how I can go about explaining this. First of all, we look at our pentatonic scale, A minor pentatonic. Now, what the blue note is, is going to depend on whether the root chord is A minor, A7, or C major. Now, why those three? Remember, there's two roots in a minor pentatonic, two roots in a pentatonic scale. This is your minor root. This is your major root. A is minor. C is major. And how do you know that one of those is the root? Well, it all depends on the root chord of the progression, the harmonic environment you're in. Okay. So if I have a C major, this the C note will wind up being my root note. So it's the root chord that determines the situation, major or minor. Now, the problem here, and this is why I always wait a while before I get into blues with students, is the A minor chord, yes, all right? So we could use A minor pentatonic. If A minor is a root chord, let's just lay down a quick progression. And since A minor is my root chord, I should want to go here to the A note, to the end. And you can hear it, that's the root. Now the problem lies in the fact that when you get to blues, it's rooted on the minor root, okay? So you have to have some form of A chord. And what form of A chord is it? It's an A7, okay? So you can look at it like this. When you do the minor pentatonic, not minor pentatonic, when you do the pentatonic, it's both minor and major, depending. Uh, there are two possible root chords for the A note in the, in the uh, A minor pentatonic. That would be A minor chord, which would give you a purely minor chord environment, and A7 chord there, which would give you the blues environment, whereas if you have a C major chord, then the root switches over to the C note. I hope that's made clear. Now, this is the tricky part. The blues, all right, when I play blues, okay, on that A7, the blue note is precisely the C note, okay? That's the blue note. Why? Because it's the minor note. C is minor to A. This is so confusing. When I build an A minor chord, I get A, C, E. C is the note that makes it, what tells you whether it's major or minor. It's either this or this, all right? So when I'm playing an A7, that C note is like the flat third. It's like part of the minor chord. So you're playing minor under major, as I suggested in my last uh, one of my last videos. Okay. Now, C is the blue note, right? All right. I always have a hard time explaining this. So... So now we're going to switch. All right, put that on the back burner. We're going to switch over to the key of C major. Okay. Now, 
the blue note is the minor note. So now we ha we're under a completely different pentatonic scale, C minor pentatonic, and I get the... That's an E flat note. In C major, that E flat will be the blue note. So we have the minor major pentatonic, and now we're rooting on that C major. When we root on the A, okay, we steal the blue note from the C, from the key of C. So in other words, it's the same E flat note. But now in a minor con A minor context, we get sense. So we're switching from the C major to the A minor. When we looked at C major, E flat was the blue note. Why? Because it's the minor note of the C major chord, uh, of the C chord, okay? Then we kept that same blue note, all right? Now, if I were to count up proper diatonic scale steps, right? One, two, three, four, five of the A minor scale, this E flat note sits between four and five. So it's called the flatted fifth. Of the A minor chord, it's the flatted fifth. Now, we stole that E flat when we're in C. We stole that E flat. But you can also think about, well, what if I threw a flatted fifth into the C major? All right, so then I get... E flat note. This is totally in relation to C. I have a root, I have a third, and I have a fifth. And if I flat that fifth, there's a flat five from the A minor. All right, so what that means is, let me just put it simply first. Uh, when you're in a minor rooted uh, situation, the only blue note you can have is that flat five, okay? So if I'm in A minor, that's the only blue note I could have is E flat. But when we move to major, dominant major, all right, the seventh chord the, with the flat seven has two blue notes. And then if you have a major seven chord environment where it actually has three blue notes. So let's go over these first. Uh, Let's start again. We're in a major environment. We know that the blue note is the minor note of C, so there's the first blue note. All right, let me lay down uh, just some steady chords here. I'm just going to vamp a C chord. So my first blue note... That is the flat three. Now, the second blue note is the flat five. So C, D, e, G is the chord, the three notes of the chord, and I root third, fifth, I flat the five. Now, that's assuming that that C chord is dominant. What I'm going to do to really bring this out is now I'm going to play the th uh, third environment, major seven, C major seven environment. And uh, now in that case, we'll have three blue notes, all right? Uh, first one, I'll hit you over the head. It's a little too, too intense, but uh, let me explain. Uh, I'm gonna do a classic one, six, two, five, 50 style. <laughs> Now 
Now there's a third blue note, and that's the flat of seven. So you can hear all those blue notes in operation. Um, let me bring out each one separately now. So the first is the flat three. Now I'll bring out the flat five. Now you put it all together, you get a lovely mix of these sour little notes that really sound well American. analysis why why is the flat seven a blue note all right oh crap okay really a lot of glare i call the sun in southern california the x-ray sun it's so potent all right there we go i guess you know, this is my buddy over here all right so we have uh the c major scale and i'm building over here a c major seven chord c e g and B, right? C, E, G, B. Now, uh, the flat three sits between D and E. It's an E flat note right there. So we have that. We stole the flat five from the minor situation, which would be G flat right over here. But why the flat seven? What's the reasoning behind that? Well, let's look at, you have to know your intervals. Let's look at C to E, all right? When we notice we have a flat three, and the distance is whole step, whole step, all right? So we have a flat three sitting between one of the whole steps, the second whole step that shows up. Well, when we build a C major seven chord, C, E, G, B, right? G to B is whole step, whole step. Now, my reasoning was it's kind of like a discovery, but it's not. I mean, players use this all the time, but this is uh, codified, let's say. So the distance between G and B is the same as the distance between C and E. Major third, major third. So in a, situ in a sense, you could say we have a sub-major situation in the major seven chord. This is the primary major, and this is like a sub-major, okay? And as in the C to E, we go step, and in between the next whole step is the blue note. Here we go step, and in between the next whole step is the blue note. And here we find the flat seven. That's the reasoning behind this. And I actually, I thought this out. Well, if with a major third and a major chord, I flat the three and I have the same interval at the end of a major seven chord, can I flat the seven? And yes, you can. So you get the pretty, actually, I think that one, six, four, five uh, blues progression, that was uh, C major seven. A minor 7, D minor 7, and G7. I think when you put blues into such a soft progression like that, it's just really lovely. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound. So I really love it. All right, so to review, in a minor situation, you have only one blue note. That's the flat 5. That flat 5, when we shift over to the major as an A minor to C major, that flat five, that's flat five to the A root, but it's flat three to the C root. And there's our flat three. All right. So that's flat three to the C root. Then we 
take a cue from the A minor and steal and not take it from, but we create our own flat five out of the C chord. So we get that blue note. And uh, finally, we uh, flat the seventh, not in a blue situation, because in a blue situation, I'm on a seventh chord. If I flat the seventh, it's already in the chord. You're not going to hear anything. It, it'll... But if I have major seven, then you can hear uh, how it becomes bluesy. So I think ultimately when you play that kind of um, 50s style progression with chords extended to four notes, so the C major is C, E, G, B, the A minor is A, C, A, C, E, G, the D minor is D, F, A, C, and the G7 is G, B, D, F, right? extend everything to four notes and you can see very clearly what you're working with. Um, so for minor root, one blue note, flat five. For dominant seventh root, two blue notes, flat three, flat five. For major seventh root, three no blue notes, flat three, flat five, flat seven. And that's it, the long and short of it. I know this is a little bit nerdy, the best way to deal with this nerdy stuff is simply to pick up an instrument and try to figure out what the hell it is I'm talking about. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I was really looking forward to this lesson. I really like teaching about the blue note. Um, any other news? I guess not. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, some of you guys already saw the uh, the Walk It Talk It. Uh, well, didn't see, listen to the Walk It Talk It video. Uh, I'm actually very proud of that uh, work I did in that. I think it's it's kind of dramatic and, and uh, very melancholy and, um, and a little on the dark side. Uh, but I like it. It's poetic. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for all your support and love. Much appreciated. And I'll see you on the next round. And we're going to have, on the next round, we'll probably just have a short talk on the sharp nine chord, another blues clue. Then we're going to go after that into extreme chromaticism. That's another fun lesson. Okay, so until then, I'll see you guys. Take care.